One was the master finisher. The other the dreadlocked midfield maestro. Both are Dutch immortals. They were a part of one of the greatest teams in history. When Marco van Basten and Ruud Hulit arrived at AC Milan in 1987, they were walking into a club in the doldrums without a title for eight years. Relatively unknown, Arrigo Saki had been hired as manager and he put together a team that would change Europe's football landscape. Saki's squad won the Italian title in their first season and then in 1989, won Milan's first European Cup in two decades, beating Romanian club Stauer Bucharesti 4-0 in the final. The goal scorers were the two stars of the show, Van Basten and Hulet. Together with another Dutchman, Frank Rijkaard, who was a childhood friend of Hulet growing up in Amsterdam, they turned Milan into a powerhouse. A year later, they became the last team to win back-to-back -back European Cups with a 1-0 win over Benfica. The stars were shining. Hulet took out the 1987 Ballon d'Or, and then the following year, he was a part of a Milan trifecta in Europe's Best Player Award, with Van Basten winning the first of his three. He was the hottest player in world football, and in 1992 was also named FIFA World Player of the Year. It moved Diego Maradona to declare him one of the greatest players he'd seen live. It's between Romario and Van Basten. His partner in crime was also capturing the attention of the game's greats, with George Best declaring the dreadlocked Hulet skills on a par with Maradona. Both have the key quality you will find in all the best players. Balance. You just can't knock them off the ball. It was the same with Pelé, Beckenbauer and Cruyff. It wasn't just Milan who benefited from the dynamic duo. They combined in the orange of the Netherlands for more than a decade, with the highlight coming at the 1988 European Championships. The tournament was a crowning glory for both. Van Basten was the leading scorer after starting with a hat-trick against England in the second group match. He then scored the game winner in the 88th minute of the semi-final against the host nation West Germany. In the final against the Soviet Union, it was Hulet, the Dutch captain, who opened the scoring after 32 minutes. Early in the second half, his friend joined him in the scorebook, with Van Basten scoring one of the greatest goals in history. The perfect talent had met the perfect stage and produced the perfect moment, an unbelievable acrobatic volley. Sometimes these things just happen. Van Basten went on to score 117 goals in his next five seasons, as he claimed the title of the world's best striker. Injuries had been a constant battle, and his final game came in the 1993 Champions League, which Milan lost to Marseille. It wasn't until two years later that Van Basten finally conceded there wasn't going to be a comeback and retired at the age of 28 with an extraordinary 300 career goals to his name. Marco was the greatest striker I ever coached. His early retirement was a mortal misfortune for him, for football and for Milan. Hulet was arguably one of the most versatile footballers ever, given his ability to play in virtually every position. He took his trade to the English Premier League in 1995, joining Chelsea, where in 1997 he led them to the FA Cup, the club's first trophy for 26 years. And he'd done it as a playing coach after replacing Glenn Hoddle, who'd left Chelsea to become manager of England. Yeah, it was quite a great feeling and uh, well, I'm still tired of everything. It uh, seems all so unreal. 
he finished his playing career at Stamford Bridge in 1998 after 465 games over 19 brilliant seasons. It brought to an end a golden era of Dutch football. While Johan Cruyff is the country's undisputed king, Van Basten and Hulet are the princes, both worthy of the crown, both immortals. Big hair and a big personality. Everywhere Hulet went, he brought with him flair and style. The glitz and glamour of the English Premier League was a perfect match and even inspired him to make a move into the fashion world. I would never thought uh, of going in fashion uh, three, four years ago. But uh, there were some people who said, uh, would you like to be interested in? And I said, yes, of course, but how would you like to do it? And the easiest way would be you know, to do something in sportswear. But that is not the point. I wanted to do something that reflects your own taste. And if people like it also, that would be great. So it's not just to sell as much as possible in sportswear, because you know that all the fans will buy it, but just do something with fashion itself. It wasn't long into retirement that Hulet shocked the world, shedding his trademark dreadlocks. In 2000, I took my dreadlocks off, simply because I was fed up of the fact that people would identify me with them. I just wanted a change. As you can see, I still have hair, so that wasn't a way to hide a possible baldness. And now I feel much better without them. <laughs> Hulet then dabbled in team management, as did Van Basten, who was the Dutch coach at the 2008 European Championships. Oh yeah, we have a very difficult group. We have to play against Italy and France, which is uh, the world champion and the vice world, cha world champion. So they are the strongest team in the world. So it's a very, very difficult job for us. And we have also uh, played against Romania. And uh, we had also uh, not an easy job against them. We lost uh, in Romania. So, uh, so we have to prepare very, very well to, uh, to have a chance to come through the, the difficult group. The Netherlands lost in the quarter-final stage, and Van Basten moved on, joining his old club Ajax, before taking up a role as FIFA's technical officer in 2016.